Now, you remember in the last section, we learned that we are going to run into some really big issues when we're using a functional component with this geolocation API. So the problem is that it takes some amount of time for the geolocation service to return our position. And by the time it returns our position, we've already rendered our app component on the screen. And we have to somehow tell our component to re-render itself or update the content on the screen right after the success callback. So the solution is to create a class-based component instead of the functional one that we are currently using. So once we move over to a class-based component, we're then going to be able to use the React state system and lifecycle methods. So we're going to learn these two different methods at the same time. You ready? All right. So here are some rules of creating a class-based component. First off, we must create a JavaScript class JavaScript classes were introduced with ES 2015. Now, the second requirement is that the class that we create must have extends worth. Then we're going to say react.component. We're going to talk more about exactly what that means in just a moment when we refactor the app. And then finally, the other rule or requirement of our class-based components are that they must define a render method that is going to return some JSX. So with all that in mind, let's flip back over to our code editor, and we're going to start to refactor our app component. Now, I'm going to leave this functional component just right here uh, so we can easily make some comparisons between the functional and the class-based implementation of our app. So just leave it there. Now, I say class app extends react.component. So what I'll do is then open up the class body with a curly braces, and then I can try to define a render method. And then once inside the render method, I'm going to return a div with the text, you are in the Northern Hemisphere. And <laughs> that's all. So I'm going to pull over this geolocation API stuff right here. So I'm going to cut all that and paste it down into the render method like so. And then I'm going to just delete the functional component. Okay, so now I want to tell you a little bit about this extending React component thing right here. So when we make a class, we are creating a new class inside JavaScript that has just one method assigned to it, and that is the render method. However, React expects that our class-based component has many other methods attached to it. Now, normally, we do not implement these methods by ourselves. Instead, we follow all these other methods from this other class called React Component. So essentially, the reason that we are extending React Component right here is that it allows us to put a ton of built-in functionality from this other class called React Component into our class. So in other words, we're just borrowing functionality to put in our app class. All right? So let's save this, and then we'll flip back to our browser. And we can see our text, you are in the Northern Hemisphere, right here on the screen. Now, you might think, great, that's fantastic, our job is done here. <laughs> no. Just turning that functional component into a class-based one is not going to solve any of the problems that we have fetching our physical location, but it is one step toward getting a solution. So why don't we take a break right here, and in the next section, we're going to talk about the second step, which is to use the React state system to approach the solution.